So, Mr. President, as I, as I am here on the floor today and speaking of, of, of great news for Alaskans, I, I cannot yield the floor without um, uh, noting the significance of the news yesterday. Yesterday, uh, a record of decision was announced by the Obama administration announcing that, uh, that the Willow Project in the National Petroleum Reserve, Alaska, has, has been approved and that ConocoPhillips, the producer, will be allowed to advance under uh, what is now a modified alternative that will allow for, th for three pads of, of drilling activity in, in the National Petroleum Reserve. This is significant for Alaska. From a jobs perspective, this is going to be about 2,500 jobs to a state that desperately needs that. This will be revenue and income to a state that desperately needs that. Our economy is, is still suffering in a post-pandemic world. Our, our economy is still challenged in many, many ways. We're seeing a net out migration unlike any state in the country. And, and, it's, and it is because it's directly tied to the state of our economy. And so we recognize that we are a resource-based state. So to be able to access resources, not only for the benefits of Alaskans, but for the benefit of the country, and, and in fairness, Mr. President, for the benefit of our friends and allies who look to us, who look to us and our resources um, to be able to help them as well. So I have been asked by many, what, what is the Willow Project? Well, the Willow Project is an oil project, yes, but Willow represents economic security. It represents energy security, and it represents national security. It was a pretty incredible effort that came together to advance the cause of this. This was not one oil company that is standing off in the corner saying we want to be allowed to, to proceed here. It was an extraordinary coalition of, of Alaska Native leaders and, and individuals. It was an extraordinary coalition of labor leaders, not only in the state. 100% of the labor unions in Alaska support advancing Willow backed by their national unions back here because they know that these will be good paying jobs, these will be solid union jobs, these will be jobs for the future. It was backed by a, a, a coalition of, of industry leaders, um, uh, the university, unanimous, unanimous resolutions out of both houses of our state legislature. Think about that. We've got a pretty broad spectrum uh, across the political uh, spectrum uh, when it comes to, to our state legislators. So to know that from the southeast all the way to the north and, and the southwest, that Alaskans came together through their elected representatives to affirm their support of this project advancing was really quite remarkable. A united delegation, Senator Sullivan, Representative Peltola, myself, coming together to lead this effort, working with our governor. Um, it was a coalition that was remarkable and remarked upon, and, and rightly so, because there are oftentimes so many, so many matters that draw us apart. And there are, there are opposing voices to this in Alaska, we understand that. But I think it was so important that the voices, the voices of Alaskans, particularly those who live and work and raise their families in the North Slope, that those voices were heard. And, and, and what they heard from those who are from the North Slope region are that this is not only jobs and economic opportunity. These are resources that will help us with, with our quality of life, help us um, be able to re resource and finance the search and rescue that goes on when somebody is, is, is gone missing on a, on a hunting trip for, for their subsistence purposes, to help with, with the community supports 
whether it's through the schools or public safety. The North Slope Borough is very unique in how they provide for all of their services for their residents in their eight communities across that huge borough that stretches all the way across the, north, the, the entire North Slope of the, of the state. And so for them, this is significant and real in a, in a meaningful way. It means everything to them in terms of, of health and wellness and life expectancy. As we have seen the benefits of the resources that come to these areas that flow from the oil, we have seen an absolute increase in life expectancy because of the quality of life that then can come with with decent housing, with decent health care, with access to, to, to food and resources. What, we ha what has been seen up north has been consequential. And so this, this was an issue that when presented to, to the administration, when the Alaskan voices were allowed to be heard, the administration listened, and I thank them for that. I thank them for allowing, allowing those voices to be heard. I also recognize that in addition to, to allowing Will, Willow to, to advance, the administration is, is proposing to submit uh, rulemaking in, in, a, in a period of time, um, maybe within a matter of weeks, maybe a matter uh, of months, that would provide for special protections, further special protections within the NPRA. Um, there is much to be seen about what these entails, uh, what these protections will entail, whether it will allow for any level of, of activity, whether it be um, uh, crossings in any way, uh, pipeline or road in any way. Um, there is much to be learned. Uh, the administration has, has sent that signal that, um, that in order to, to advance the oil production opportunities within the Willow footprint, that vastly reduced footprint, uh, that they want to add additional protections in, in several different areas. We will evaluate that. We will take a look critically. There is a process that will follow. Uh, we understand that. Um, but I think for, for today and where we are in recognizing the value that Willow will bring to Alaska, that Willow will bring to our country, it's important to, to, to applaud the actions of, of the administration and the president in advancing this. At, at uh, peak uh, production, Willow is expected to bring online about 180,000 barrels of oil a day. That's significant, Mr. President. It's significant. And put it into context with, with uh, where, where uh, the United States has had to turn recently as we have, we have looked to, to meet demand here in this country. The ask, the willingness to go to Venezuela to lift sanctions, to ask for more production out of Venezuela. Venezuela will be, be providing us about 100,000 barrels a day. Think about where we would be if Alaska's willow opportunity were already online. We would not have had to go to Maduro. We would not have had to go to a country whose environmental track record is abysmal we would not have to turn to those countries who not only have environmental degradation as they produce their resource, but, but human rights issues that we don't want to see, we don't want to talk about. We just know that for this time, we need your oil. We cannot export that, that environmental consequence. We should be producing where we know we can do it safely, where it's under tight environmental conditions and restrictions and limitations, where the producers will adhere to the, rule of the, the rules of the road, the rule of law, that there, is, that there is a sensitivity to the environment around there as we operate up north. They say that, that we have 
some of the tightest environmental conditions on how we access our resources out of, out of the, the northern region than anywhere, anywhere not only in the country but in the world. And there's, for, there's a reason for that. It costs more, it adds to the cost, but there's a sensitivity to the land and we appreciate that. As an Alaskan, I appreciate that and I expect that and I demand that of the companies. And if you're not willing, if you're not willing to operate this way, then you shouldn't be coming to Alaska. But companies that are willing to respect the fact that when, when, the, when the tundra is no longer frozen, there's no, there's no exploration activity. There is no, there is no work that proceeds in that way off of the tundra. So in Alaska, in Alaska, our season, if you will, is 90 days. It's 90 days, and it's not 90 days in the good weather. It's between basically January and April, the coldest, darkest, harshest time that anyone could be up on the North Slope, much less being outside and working. But that's how we do it, because that's when the ground is frozen. That's when, when we have that license to operate, if you will, and we respect that. And it's not, it's not when the companies decide we're done with this aspect of the program. When, when things start to, to warm up and start to thaw, that's when you are gone. And you are gone because the state regulators and the federal regulators have said, clock's up. You don't have extra additional days because because spring is coming. And so think about, think about that. Any other business in the world, can you think about having just a 90-day window of operation? We do a fair amount of that in Alaska because quite honestly, our, our seafood industry is uh, certainly that way out in Bristol Bay. We do have a lot of seasonal activity, but think about what that means if you're trying to build a project and you have to stop stop after 90 days. Think about what it means to, to design a project around sensitive areas that may have, um, uh, may have wildlife or, or, or waterfowl that we need to be sensitive to. Well, that's what we do. This project, this Willow project that was sent back for, for revision was to make sure that the impact on subsistence hunting, the impact on, on the, uh, uh, the, the, the animals um, was, was not going to be uh, appreciable. And so there is a sensitivity. We get it. We get it. The people who live up there are the first stewards of the land, and they get it. And so when you have whaling captains who are standing shoulder to shoulder with the Alaska delegation out there, out in front of the Capitol, standing there saying that we need willow. We need willow for our economy. We need willow for our people. And we will make sure, we will make sure that the subsistence needs of, of those who, who live in the area are met. We will make sure that the environmental considerations are met. So we are, we are ready. We are ready to proceed. Um, and as I stand here, I, I'm, I'm regretful that I think the next phase of this is not necessarily uh, going to be um, movement towards, um, towards gaining production, it's going to be movement towards the courts because that's just what seems to happen in every development project in my incredible state. Um, but we are prepared for that as well. We are prepared for that as well because this project is environmentally sound, it is just, it is fair, it is balanced, and it is time. So again, I stand here um, appreciative 
that the administration has heard the voice of Alaskans. Now let's get to work. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.